Lawrence, the concept of quantum gravity is a, a hot topic among sure. physicists. I want to understand why and, and why it's so important to unify quantum mechanics and relativity and how, what are people doing about it? Well, it's, it, at some level, it's one of the most fundamental outstanding questions in physics because it takes um, two ideas which are both strange and puts them together and <laughs> makes something that's doubly strange. General relativity told us that, I mean, that, that space and time are not at all what they seem to be. That, the, that our presence changes space. Space itself, which we think of as the stage on which we exist, is dynamical. It itself can evolve. And we curve space just by being here talking. And we change time by being here talking. And that perception changed our view of, of, of the stage on which we exist more than perhaps almost any other development in physics, but the other development in physics that changed our perception of the universe's quantum mechanics, which in many ways is even stranger than gravity. Gravity, well, you know, the fact that, that space is curved may seem strange, but you can comprehend it classically. You can think of, a, of, of this tablecloth curving as yeah, I lift yeah, it up. That, yeah. that we can picture. Quantum mechanics is so strange that we can't even intuit it. The, 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 the truths of quantum mechanics are are clearly false in our perception. The fact that this coffee cup is here is something we classically understand. But quantum mechanically, we can know that that coffee cup is not just there. And in fact, the particles in that coffee cup are, are not just sitting there doing a single thing. They're doing many different things at the same time. And the truths of quantum mechanics are so strange that we will never intuit them, no matter how advanced we become as a civilization because we are all we, we are classical objects we can't ever directly experience the phenomena or at least rarely experience directly the phenomena that the mathematics and quantum mechanics tells us are true well not only are both those strange but it turns out general relativity and quantum mechanics are incompatible mathematically that when you try and apply the laws of quantum mechanics to the dynamics of space and time you come up with nonsense mathematical nonsense and therefore, since these are sort of the two greatest intellectual pillars of what was 20th century physics, it is one of the greatest challenges for physicists to try and put them together. That, that being said, what one should point out... And this is true even though relativity deals with the macro, huge structure of the universe, and quantum mechanics deals with the micro structure of, of atoms and subatomic particles, you still need to put them together, well, even though they're different scales. It's a really good, really good question, because in fact, in principle, you might say, well, that's just an esoteric question. It really doesn't matter. At very small scales, quantum mechanics and gravity must be put together to understand them, but who really cares? And, and I was just going to say, in some sense, for most of our understanding of the universe, understanding quantum gravity is irrelevant. Right. It really is. We can understand almost all of nature with ever un without ever understanding quantum gravity. So while it's a fundamental theoretical question, it's not an obstacle to understanding the way much of the universe right. works, right. except for one thing that makes it interesting, more interesting, is that the universe is expanding. And right. what was very large now, at the very beginning, was very small. Uh, and if we right. really want to answer that important question is, how do we get here and why, or what, what caused the beginning of the universe? Was there something before the beginning? All those fascinating questions. At some point, we're stuck. Because once, if we extrapolate back the universe, we, we, we know that the laws of physics hold back to the time in the, our entire observable universe. All the 400 billion galaxies we see were with contained in regions smaller than the size of an atom. Right. But At when you that get smaller, point. When you get smaller still, even that point we can understand it. <laughs> but when you get smaller still, at the, and really want to get to the very beginning, then we have to know how quantum mechanics and gravity work together. Because gravity is what describes the universe on, on its largest scales, which at that time will be that big. Quantum mechanics describes on the smallest scales, which at that time will so be that big. So at that point, it's the same scale. It's the same scale, and we really can never truly answer that fundamental question. And that's why, in some sense, there's this, there's this imp cosmic imperative to understand that theory. And, to, and perhaps only in that sense will we really have a pressing need to understand quantum gravity. Of course, theoretical physicists want to solve paradoxes then that was behind a lot of what Einstein did. And so even if it weren't for that, there'd be people who'd be tr still trying to understand sure. how the world sure. works on fundamental skills. And I think it's always important to continue to ask those questions because you never know where, where the answers are going to take you.
Yeah, but what, what we're saying now is, though, in addition, in addition to the, the purely physical joy of understanding a paradox, we're now dealing with, you really want to take it back to the beginning. You have no choice but to integrate them. Yeah, and, and this and is a great place to talk about that. We're at the, we're, we're at the end of the world here in Iceland, and so we're, we're looking at trying to think about the other end of the world, the very beginning. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 at the, and at the same time, uh, uh, the, the uh, greatest source of, of power that we can imagine to explore the regions of quantum mechanics is the early universe. So the early universe, in essence, becomes our, our gigantic uh, cosmic accelerator that can, that can probe that, that distance where, where nothing else can. Yeah, although there, there are, we've, we're now coming to realize the limitations of our universe, too. The universe is a cosmic laboratory. I mean, I got involved in, in, in this interface between cosmology and particle physics over 20 years ago because yeah. I realized that there are fundamental questions. Right. We'll never be able to build an accelerator large enough to do what the universe did in its right. earliest moments of being. But at the same time, there's another, there's a frustration we're learning, and that is, well, when you have an accelerator, you can turn it on and turn it off and do the experiment again and again. Yes, yeah, once. Our experiment <laughs> was done once. Right. We only, at least within our accessible, measurable space, we only have one universe. And that may be a fundamental problem to understanding because, in fact, quantum mechanics tells us that to really understand things you, have you to may run it <laughs> yeah you, you have to mean you know it, things are probabilistic and you just have one measurement it it it, it doesn't tell uh, you the whole uh. sense of reality and so just having one universe may be a fundamental obstacle to ever understanding things you've got to create some more well in fact yeah you may have to create universes in the laboratory yeah. we don't know if you can in fact one of the one of the uh interesting things that has come out of physics in the last uh, 10 or 20 years is the growing realization by many people that it's quite likely that there are many universes, but we may have only theoretical access to them. Um, we've already learned, in fact, when we look out at the, at the sky, the cosmic microwave background, the, measure, the afterglow of the Big Bang, right. one of the most important observations in cosmology, and in, in, in won another Nobel Prize uh, uh, last year, in fact. We've already learned that there may be problems because we've seen some anomalies in, in, in that radiation bath, some, in, in the way the temperature changes from point to point. Does that point out some new physics? Maybe, maybe not. The reason being that we now think we can understand how all of the galaxies we see in the universe today arose as quantum fluctuations in the early universe, random quantum fluctuations. Well, if they're random and if they're probabilistic, then every now and then you can have something that seems weird. If I flip a coin, every now and then I'll get 12 heads in a row. Right. Well, if I flip it a lot of times, I won't see that too often. But if I only flip it one, 12 times, I happen to get 12 heads in a row. I don't know if the coin is fixed or if it's just an accident. And when we look at some of the fluctuations now that are a little weird, we don't know we, because we only have access one, to one universe one if it's fundamentally weird physics or just an accident yeah. <laughs> of the universe in which we live, which is really kind of a fascinating problem. And it really is. And therefore, that, that imposes sort of a, 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 a fundamental constraint on how much you possibly can know through this laboratory in, of the universe absolutely and unless and as you say unless we we can figure out a way to to create universes <laughs> at will and try and measure this we may forever be constrained in our knowledge what's your confidence in solving quantum gravity in our lifetime it's a very going to be a very difficult problem i've we you know there's been a lot of noble effort in the last 30 years to apply a whole set of new mathematical te techniques as, associated with what's called string theory and so far, there's been no great progress. And so um, I'm not particularly optimistic that we will have um, a full theory of quantum gravity because I suspect what, what most people, when they think of general relativity, Einstein sitting there thinking in a room, think that that's how science is done, but it's not. We really rely heavily on experiment. And in fact, Einstein did as well. The, 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 the experimental hints that led him to that were very important. He didn't just sit... In a, in a closed space, thinking about stuff in the middle of nothing. And we really rely on experiment. And this is an area where there really are not going to be many experimental uh, results. And we, we, we're going to have to have access to good ideas. And unfortunately, good ideas are a lot harder to come by than good experiments.